The life of billions of people depends on water. Every day on Earth it rains in hundreds of thousands of places at the same time. But if it were not for high-speed shooting, we would never have learned that drops are capable of having such unusual behavior to lie in a form of a curved ball on the surface of the water. Sometimes a droplet falling down gives birth to a smaller droplet. And more. More. So why do drops behave so unusually? Let's ask the expert. The strength of the molecular interaction between molecules gives elasticity. That is, something that prevents them from converging. And this force, which prevents their converging, in fact, is like an elastic band or an elastic spring. It keeps the molecules at a certain distance and forms an almost ideal sphere, thanks to the surface tension. But in space where weightlessness is present, the sphere is ideal in this case. But here it depends on the diameter of the droplet. The smaller the drop, the more it resembles an ideal spherical shape, unlike a drop of a larger size. The strength of surface tension is visible in a large volume of water and in a tiny drop. Therefore, that's what we see. The surface, like a trampoline or a stretched mesh, keeps the drop for a while. And the drop strives to become a sphere again because of the effect of surface tension. And the smaller the drop, the more regular the shape is. And what happens if the drop falls from a higher altitude? The energy from the falling drop goes into the formation of a crater. It is also called a crown and the latter in turn collapses and forms a spike with a thickening at the end. We tried to achieve the effect of the crown, but already at the tip of a spike. Here's what it looks like. There are cases when this needle forms quite a considerable height, but it's necessary to choose the diameter of the droplet and correspondingly the height of its fall and modify the experimental conditions. It is possible to do so that the needle forms detachable drops at a quite great height, like this one for example. Look at the result. The second drop destroys the emerging needle on the surface of the water. Water turned out to be such a mysterious and beautiful substance that we could not pass by the opportunity to debunk or, on the contrary, confirm one of the internet myths about water. But we needed help. Dennis, we shot water for our film in completely different forms. Here on the high-speed camera, it showed some incredible properties. Actually, it turned out to be a very photo-intelligenic substance. But among all this diversity, personally for me, there is one mystery in the internet. It was a very nice shot. There is such a video. These craftsmen made an installation that allows water to do like this. That is, there's an impression that the water seems to be motionless, hangs in zigzags in the air. I know you as a man who builds various interesting things in his laboratory, but can you make such a thing as this? When did you find this video? Well, half a year ago, I guess. A couple of years ago, it got a million or two million views, and everyone wondered how they had done it all. It isn't simple to do that. I think we can. Why not? The speaker pushes the handset with a certain frequency, 24 hertz. This is 24 vibrations of the speaker membrane per second. A TV video is also 24 or 25 frames per second. Now, 
To record the video, we used a camera that shoots almost 10 times faster, 200 frames per second. And then while editing, we just skipped some of the frames. We took every eight frames. The slow video became normal, but now one phase of swinging the tube disappeared. It was back and forth, back and forth. Now it is, roughly speaking, only back. And the movement of the tube into the other direction disappeared. You can do this trick only with video editing or using a stroboscope for it. Without these tricks, you cannot achieve the magical effect. Actually, I feel a bit silly. The effect is there, I know it, but I don't see it with my eyes. Only when the episode is edited, probably, then everything will be seen. And try to do so, and now I see 25 times. Come on, come on, come on. Dennis, this effect of the stroboscope does not work out exactly for me. You're a pro here. We'll return to the study of the riddles of water in the next film of the project, Experiments. Believe me, there are still a lot of them. Today on Experiments, mysterious and incredible water. We'll show you how unusual it looks when filmed by a high-speed camera. In the first part, using super speed clothing, we saw how amazing the behavior of an ordinary drop might be. It either breaks the water surface, creating a crater in it, which in science is called a cavern, or on the contrary, it jumps on the surface of the water like a trampoline forming a smaller drop, and then even smaller, and smaller. And here are a lot of drops. In fact, it's an ordinary shower. And probably you've never thought why the continuous flow of water from the shower head reaching the surface of the bath is divided into individual drops. Here, look. Water streams emerge from the shower head under pressure, but then they are actually in a free fall and gradually split up. This process is influenced by surface tension forces, air currents, and gravity. Here's another thing from the daily routine. It often happens that the liquid from the glass or from the tip of the kettle doesn't pour strictly vertically, but sort of sticks to the surface of the wall and flows along it. What is called, well, I've spilt it again in daily life is called Coanda attachment in physics. Look, the outer wall of the glass prevents air from going there. A low pressure area appears between the liquid and the vessel and an air swirl is created, attracting water. By the way, Coanda attachment is used in aviation when they place the engines above the wing of the aircraft to increase its essential power, like in an AN-72 and AN-74 aircraft, which were nicknamed Cheborashkas after a popular Soviet animated character with oversized ears. And this process might be familiar to many of you too. But here's what it looks like in slow motion playback. Falling onto a glass, effervescent tablets create bizarre craters. Then bubbles are formed. They float to the surface and collapse there. That is, they explode into the finest spray.
you can hardly find a person who doesn't know that water, when heated, starts to boil, and when cooled, freezes. It turns out this is not true. High temperature does not make water boil, as well as a low temperature does not make it freeze. From our school age, we remember that if you heat water to 100 degrees centigrade, it will boil, cool it to zero, and it will freeze. However, as any rule, this one has its buts and ifs. It all depends on pressure. For example, high in the mountains, water boils at a lower temperature like 70 to 80 degrees. This same applies to ice. At a high pressure, it starts melting down. Yet, water can change its qualities even at normal air pressure. Firstly, don't try to repeat our experiment. It is dangerous. Secondly, as we don't assume you will follow our advice, we will deliberately conceal part of our conditions required for it. So let's go. We take a glass of distilled water and heat it in the microwave for five minutes at the maximum 800 watts power. It just looks like hot water, but if you put a spoonful of coffee or sugar in it, That's what happens. It boils off. Quite impressive, yeah? But the question is, why? For usual boiling, we need bubbling centers. They are substances in the water or unevenness of the vessel where small bubbles of air group. When water is heated in a microwave, there is an overheated liquid effect. It jumps quickly over the temperature limit of 100 degrees. As the water is distilled without any substances and the glass walls are smooth, there are no bubbling centers and their function is performed by foreign matter, for example, coffee. Just a couple of granules and water will boil immediately. Firstly, you can conduct our next experiment at home. Secondly, we will show all of its details and nuances so that you can really do it. Let's go. We put bottles with distilled water in a freezing chamber for two hours. We take the bottles out and nothing. It's just water, no ice. And that's at minus 18 for two hours. Yet, if we do this, ice will appear immediately right in front of us. The effect is opposite to quickly boiling water as this water freezes quickly. But the question is the same. How is it possible? To become ice, water needs crystallization centers, something it will freeze around, sand grains, extra substances. In distilled, it is completely clean water. There are no impurities, so it remains liquid. However, if it is hit or shaken, air dissolved in water effervesces and the water crystallizes around it. Another fascinating effect. If you pour this overcooled distilled water on ice cubes, you'll see stalactites frozen on them. The physics of this process is the same. When there is crystallization center, ice appears almost immediately. Can water generate electricity? But of course it can. At hydroelectric power plants, falling water rotates turbine blades producing current.
Okay, but can usual water generate electricity? Yes, no, just a second to think it over. Well, better have a look. We install a vessel with water on the stand. We put tubes crisscross through metal rings and connect the upper vessel to the lower ones with electrodes in them. This is called a Kelvin water dropper. We open the valve. and small streams of water generate a current, weak but noticeable. If the stripes are not impressive, look at this. We replace them with metal rods and a spark appears among them, and that's just streaming water. We think that the cans are not charged. That is, there is no control over it. However, they have slight electric current because of a range of reasons for example, natural radioactivity. So, lower vessels in the Kelvin water dropper have different charges, positive and negative, like in a battery. Going through the metal rings on the cans, drops of water change from them, one positively and one negatively, increasing the energy in the lower vessels. They polarize the rings more, while the rings in their turn polarize new drops, making it an endless circle. When the charge is accumulated, the current and charge leak. Water is one of the most common substances on the planet. But, as we saw, science proves that it is also one of the most mysterious substances. In certain circumstances, any quality of water known to us may become surprising. But that is exactly what gives us some space for our experiments, including those you will see in the future.